Good morning. My name is Nigel Brown and I'm District Vet from Glen Innes with Northern Tablelands Local Land Services. I'm here today in the rather scrumptious surroundings of the UNE Smart Farm University of New England to talk with a few people, properly socially distanced of course, about water. We've had a lot of problems over the last months, years with inadequate water. Now in some cases we've actually come to the other extreme. But I'm talking with several people uh, to ask them their opinions and to try and sort out some of the many different problems that we LLS have faced and been questions we've been asked uh, during the drought. So, may I now introduce our first truly scrumptious speaker, Todd Andrews. Todd is Beef uh, Development Officer with DPI, based here in Armadale. I think I'm right there, Todd. It's spot on. And uh, so we're going to have a, a, a brief chat about practical things, water with livestock. So I suppose the, the first thing is to get you, the, the viewer, to think about how your own water system held up during your drought. Did you have more than enough water? Perhaps you could utilise it properly. So, Todd, for many producers, water supplies became very strained and, and often dictated stock sales. Uh, Todd, what are the opportunities for people to improve water supplies for the future? Because inevitably... Yeah, Nigel, I guess there are a couple of options. And first is to actually uh, increase your water supply. And so there's a couple of strategies available there. First is that uh, producers should be aware, aware of their uh, harvestable rights associated with their land. And their harvestable water rights is 10% of their uh, average annual rainfall that falls over the whole area of their land. And that volume of water um, producers have access to and they don't need a license to, to store that amount of water. So if their storage is less than that, definitely something for them to look into. The other thing that producers may not be aware of is their uh, right to stock in domestic water. And so that means that producers uh, do have legal access without needing a licence to um, surrounding water supplies but also underground aquifers. They would need a licence to, um, to, to, to access the water with a bore or a dam. But that is also um, you know, something producers uh, may not be aware of. And the second strategy would be to use their existing supply uh, more efficiently. So a lot of producers would have uh, taken the opportunity over the last few months prior to rain to clean out their dams. Now that is really important because you're not increasing the surface area but you're obviously increasing your storage capacity. But deeper dams allow mixing of layers so it prevents the water from heating up and it also prevents uh, uh, nutrient concentration nutrients concentrating, they stay diluted with the mixing of the water layers and so both of those things, cool water and low nutrient roads, are really important for minimising um, algal blooms but also outbreaks of other aquatic weeds which can reduce some um, stock access to water. Right, so with that what about the mud in the bottom of the old dams, is that a, a problem? Uh, yes, uh, Fencing off dams is another option, or not even fencing off, but supplying water troughs outside of dams. So that has a number of beneficial effects of reducing um, stock acts to, to dams. So first thing is, you know, we had a number of reports of weakened stock actually dying around the edges of dams and trying to access water. So major loss when you consider what those animals would be worth you know, in, in, at today's prices. So that's really important. Uh, and you have like the indirect losses of the pugging and dirtying of the water so stock won't drink as much or they won't or they'll refuse to drink it at all. And then you have the problems of stock but also wild and feral animals going into the water. You've got manure and urine going into the water which can cause direct problems with potential diseases such as uh, leptospirosis or, or E. coli. So the advantages of troughs. What are they? So 
What they really allow is a lot more flexibility for location of water supply compared to dams. And so it allows uh, producers to, to strategically uh, place those troughs to really utilise um, uh, all of the pasture availability. You know, producers in this pasture, I had numerous reports of, you know, some dry feed being available on the hills, but stock not willing to go there because it was too far from water supplies. So there is a potential to strategically place troughs, sometimes away from shade or other areas where stock like to congregate to encourage movement, stock movement across tracks uh, and therefore to utilise um, water supply. Um, you know, the, often get the question, should I um, have shade over water troughs? And to that I would say it depends how much shade is in the paddock. So, if there's limited shade and you have shade over your trough, then you're going to get stock congregating there. And that means you've got potential for manure and urine to go into the troughs. You've got potential for dominant animals to kind of uh, manage access to the trough. Uh, and, and you also have you know, potential for you know, erosion around the trough, but also reduced uh, paddock feed utilisation. So overgrazing around that area and less utilisation further away from the trough. Could I ask, you talked about it being too far to get to water. For different classes of stock, what, what's too far? Well, in general, we'd say that sheep would you know, go sort of two, two and a half k's from water and cattle can go a bit further, roughly twice that, up to five k's. But as we know, uh, as you get further into trout, stock get weakened, and especially cows with calves, you know, rapidly lose energy. Uh, pasture loses its energy and it also becomes a lot drier so stock need to drink a lot more. Uh, this past drought was characterised by you know, record breaking temperatures, a lot of wind, so that meant stock were really thirsty and so uh, you know, access to water became ever more important. You were talking about the importance of water quality. Um, what's the actual impact of water quality on stock health? Well, uh, good quality water is, is really vital for, for animal health and for, for adequate um, weight gain. So there's just that general health component, but there also can be um, really specific things such as uh, uh, urinary cal calculi uh, in, in weathers and steers. So uh, really important to the maintain intake, your feed intake. And so if you haven't got good feed intake, uh, you know, you haven't got good weight gain. And um, one, one of the features of this past drought was really um, big discounts for stock that, uh, that were poor. And so, you know, avoiding weight loss wherever possible was, uh, is, is definitely something to take out of this past drought. So within water, just stood on the top, if I'm looking at these uh, dams, I'm seeing turbid, dirty water. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. So there are a number of components of water quality. So uh, you know, producers would be aware of potential for salts yeah. to, uh, to reduce intake, and especially if stock uh, have access to licks, and licks are often based on salt. So if your water is salty on top of that, uh, water intake will be reduced. So saltiness is, is, a, is, is a major potential um, water impact on water quality. So producers that are accessing new supplies for the future uh, can get their um, uh, uh, saltiness tested uh, as total dissolved salts or, or as um, electrical conductivity. So you've got dissolved salts, you've got um, turbidity or muddiness, um, and so that is uh, you know, what we might have seen after, after storms this year. So how much uh, floating debris and silt is, is in the water. So that's a um, uh, component of water quality. We have uh, things like algae, so obviously potentially toxic uh, blue-green algae, but other algae and also uh, floating aquatic weeds which can form really thick masses. So, so obviously there's a lot of technical information and figures and so forth. So where can people get all that? Because I don't want you to recite it out now. Yeah, so uh, water quality test kits are available from local land services offices. And so it's really easy to you know, get a test kit 
send off your um, send off your water sample to the New South Wales lab in Wollongba, and uh, your feedback is um, really comprehensive uh, in terms of the, uh, interpreting the water quality. So they give you an interpretation of those water quality measurements uh, and some recommendations about uh, what they're suitable for in terms of both cropping. Uh, stock, uh, but also domestically. So we'll uh, make sure that we uh, give people the details on those prime facts. So just changing topic a little bit, um, a lot of people around the area have moved stock into containment areas for, for drought feeding. Uh, lots of pros, lots of cons. Uh, what are specific aspects of, of water related to that? So yeah. you know, Nigel, uh, most producers are aiming for productivity feeding in their stock containment areas. So that means um, you know, high grain ration diets and trying to maximise growth. And so water quality becomes even more important there. You know, we mentioned about the importance of water quality in terms of maintaining, maximising intake and therefore growth rate. So there are a couple of things that uh, producers need to take note of um, in, in their stock containment areas. Uh, how could producers know that they might have an issue? Well, uh, you know, producers need to observe stock. So if they're hanging around water supply, they're not drinking, uh, you've got a congregation of animals, maybe they are trying to drink from closer to the inlet valve, or maybe they're drinking a lot more after the trough has been cleaned. That might be an indication that you need to either clean troughs more regularly or that you have a water quality issue. So some of the things that um, can happen you know, obviously, you know, you build a stock container area or utilise them in drought. Droughts are dusty. So, um, stock do not like to drink from water supplies that have got that layer of dust on the top. Sheep in particular do not like that and it can affect intake. So, uh, how can you manage that? Or well, the first and most important thing is to have your animal density right in your pen. And having enough density of animals so that you get that build up of uh, of manure and urine and you get that absorbent pad there which is really good good as a dust suppressant. The other thing is, is uh, ensuring that roadways are potentially not too close to your lots or not on the windward side of lots or if that's unavoidable you have to do that then make sure you get sealed with something that which you know minimizes dust. So dust is the first thing. The other thing is uh, we mentioned that the stock are on, often on high grain diets and it's important that water supply not be adjacent to feed troughs because often stock will you know, have something to eat and then go and have a drink. And so any grain or other matter that falls from the mouth into the stock can ferment or sour the water. So at least 10 metres away. You know, ideally at the other end of the pen, but at least 10 metres away. The other thing about uh, containment areas is that often it, it might be uh, you know, set up as a temporary structure, so producers might use black poly pipe and, and black poly troughs. These are really prone to heating up, and stock don't like you know, hot water. It can affect um, can affect intake, and so so there are some of the things that uh, producers can be aware of in their stock containment areas. When you were saying enough trough space, did you have a sort of figure in mind for for animals? Or yeah, look, um, we talked before about dominant animals kind of uh, liking to, to you know, be the managers of, of, uh, of both feed and water troughs. And so we've got really good information in our um, stock containment prime fact about adequate trough space for numbers of head. Um, you mentioned earlier on about urinary calculi, and I know I've seen quite a few cases this last 12 months of urinary calculi. What's your opinion on how to prevent those and how to uh, how do they sort of start and develop? Well, we mentioned that uh, in stock containment areas, but also you know in supplementary feeders that might be out in the paddock, that the stock are on high grain diets. So often, uh, you know, nutrient imbalances can occur. And so it is really important to have adequate stock water there that stock want to drink, drink as much as they can, then that helps flush out uh, um, nutrient imbalances and uh, stops these kidney stones, if you like, or these stones from building up. They're potentially fatal, 
uh, and we saw you know we saw quite isolated outbreaks, severe outbreaks, but you know in different areas. So definitely something to be aware of. And with bore water versus runoff dam water, any difference there or streams even? Well, in terms of yes, the saltiness, and so um, if if the any water supply is more salty, that might uh, cause stock to drink less. And it, we also we mentioned that if they have a, um, access to salt mix or other supplements that might have salt, if your water source is also salty, then they're going to drink less. And the fact that they're drinking less, you're not getting this flushing uh, of these any nutrient imbalances really helps to, to keep things, um, yeah, it helps animals to filter out any excess or nutrient imbalances. And so mo moving on a bit further along this sort of water story, since we've had the drought changing, we've had storms, we've had runoff, we've had fire, uh, which has put a lot of ash onto the ground. Mm -hmm. What impacts are those going to have had on water? Yeah, look, we've had a lot of inquiry from producers that, that look at their, their dams and see that uh, uh, you know, it's holding up a lot of uh, either ash or, or sediment. And it looks pretty bad. For the most part, it looks worse than what it actually is. And so what I would say is that um, if your stock are hanging around their water source but not wanting to drink, then you've got an issue and you need to supply alternative water. But if they're drinking, then you know it should be okay. You can actually treat uh, water supplies to take out, uh, to, se to settle the sediment out, and we've got a really good prime fact on that, on, on treating um, stock water to clean it up. Um, the other thing you know, is to try and prevent that issue. So there's a couple of things there. So first is to not feed stock in the immediate catchment of dams. Because when you do that, uh, you've got a lot of pulverisation of the soil, so you've got lots of ground cover, but you've got pulverisation, so you've got a lot of dust there, which is you know can run off really easily. And the other thing is that you've got a loss of ground cover there, and so you, there's nothing to, to trap it. You know, one of the things that you know, talking about ground cover, we've had a lot of emphasis in extension uh, about maintaining ground cover, and I think producers have really you know, taken that message on board. So one thing about increasing ground cover is it's really good for uh, minimising runoff, maximising water infiltration. Great for pastures, but not as good for surface water supplies. So, you know, we've noticed uh, a lot of producers sort of say that uh, they, uh, they haven't, you know, haven't, their water supplies have run out quicker than normal. And uh, one thing has been the, you know, the record temperatures and the wind. But the other thing is the increased ground cover has actually reduced runoff. And so a lot of producers that have uh, moved towards higher intensity grazing, so, um, rotational or even cell grazing, often find that they have to source additional water supplies, and that is often groundwater. And mercifully taking it on to the next step, I had to go to a place the other day, he couldn't even find all his sheep to muster them, there was mm. so much. Does that have an impact on animals accessing water? Yeah, what we've seen, Nigel, since the rain is this incredible growth of pasture. I don't think anyone, you know, thought how quickly it could turn around it has, which has been fantastic. But I've had a couple of that reports of actually producers that have uh, noticed their stock either not being able to find water or their growth rates haven't been as good and that have been supplementary feeding sheep and wondering what's going on. And they've concluded that it's just taking a lot of energy for stock to, to make their way through this really tall pasture and looking for water. So they've actually, um, slash tracks to the water supply and that is improved growth rates. And the other thing is a lot of producers would have uh, purchased stock from outside. And so it's important not to assume that nature will take its course and that they'll find water. They will eventually, but if you can show new, new mobs or new herds where water supplies are when they first go into the paddock, that's really beneficial for you know, having that in their memory and from be able to 
find water you know, when it's convenient. Todd, that's been great chatting. Thank you so much for that. I'm sure there are plenty of other questions. And if, uh, if anybody watching has got any questions for Todd, please send them into LLS and we'll contact Todd directly and uh, find his watering hole and discuss it again. Thank you so much.